This has got the Fix-It Guy. We have a Whirlpool modern dishwasher with a Kenmore badge. Just means it's sold from Sears. But it is not heating up. It's not drying the dishes. It's not melting the soap. And this is on this model is due to a bad uh, controller. There's a little heater relay on the control board that stops working. Unfortunately, this is only after the four year mark, so it's pretty early. But for this particular model, the way to correct it is by replacing the control panel, which is pretty easy to do. We're just taking off these Torx 15 screws from the back. These are um, sure. the ones yeah, that are holding on yeah. the upper plastic okay. control panel where all the buttons are. And these are longer screws. I'm going to pull all these out. We're also going to pull out the other screws that are holding on the front panel. And they're um, just a little bit further down on the door. These come out really easily. And then we'll be taking off the plastic control panel and the front panel of the door to get to the control panel or the or the uh, the computer or brain for the dishwasher and I'll set up a link here so you can see the part number for the new controller or new brain here's the controller with the part number made by Whirlpool and I think we bought ours for about 136 but you can just shop around and see who's got it for the cheapest so now that we've got the screws out, we can lift the plastic control panel up and out of the way. And there's a little cord holding it on. We can depress this little pin and gently wiggle this out. So now this plastic control panel will be out of our way, it won't be dangling. And we just have to continue taking off a few more screws uh, that are holding on the controller. There's a couple on the side and these are slightly different type of screws. They're also Torx 15. One on the right, one on the left. They're holding a bracket that's holding onto the controller or computer. Now we'll pull off the rest of these screws that are holding on the front panel. So with this particular model, I've done this probably five or six times, and unfortunately, this just, they don't last that long. Uh, I think the best longevity we got was about 10 years. But if yours has gone out and it won't be, it won't heat anymore. This is probably the culprit. Sometimes the heating elements go out too, but it's it's less less often. getting out that last screw and then we can take the front panel off pulling off this little connector and now we're pulling the bracket off that's holding the controller and then to get the controller off we're going to use a little screwdriver and pry down on this little plastic lever and we're going to slide the controller down and it's going to help it let loose of a couple of lugs on the back. You can see these lugs. This little piece is in the way, this black plastic piece, so we're going to move it out of the way. Now it comes right off. And then it's got all the wires connected to it, so we're just going to remove those. We're going to pop off this little protective case and then we have to get off another little protector that is held on by four little tabs. We're going to pry those out of the way, get that thing off. It comes with a new new protector on the with the new controller. And then we're going to press in on these tabs to get these off. We're going to take a picture of it just as a reference, but the controller actually shows uh, what color uh, modular connectors you're supposed to put back so it's really hard to get wrong it's just a good policy to always take a picture so just taking these off one by one and just take your time make sure you never pull by the wire but always pull by the jack itself you have to pinch in and reel it off
when I got done, I did open up this case to see if the um, control board looked like there was any fried places or bad solder joints. I, I didn't see any, but I think the relay just kind of goes out on it. So now we're sped up the camera a little bit. We're just putting, this is a new controller, we're putting the wires back in according to uh, the color code. Again, on the, on the back it shows you with little tiny writing, it says purple or yellow or um, violet or brown, so you know exactly where they go. They're also, the way they're designed, you, you can't really push them in wrong. Once we get those in, we're going to put those little plastic protectors back on. If you didn't put those back in, it would still work fine. They just put them on there to help retain them so they're less likely to pop out. So here goes this long one that holds in a bunch of wires, we're clicking that into position. And we got a, a smaller box looking one that goes on the connectors here over by my right hand. And the same thing just kind of snaps into place. Got that one. Now we're going to slide these lugs back in the plastic lugs and then push the controller up toward the top that locks it in. Put this little plastic piece back in. And then we'll go ahead and put this whole bracket back into the door assembly. And once it's in there, we'll put in those two screws that come in from the sides that hold it in. They're different looking. They're more machine screws. They have finer threads. They're shorter. So we get those in there, put them in by hand first, and we'll tighten them up. And then after this was done, I tested it turned it on, put it on, all the settings on um, the highest heat, and usually you want to wait till about 20 minutes before you check to see if it got hot. But after 20 minutes when I opened it, I got a big plume of steam, and that's a sign of a healthy dishwasher. So it totally solved the problem. So we're going to put in this other screw by hand, and we'll zip it in. And once that's into position, we can put the front panel back on, front panel kind of lift it up and slide it down over the door and then just add the screws to hold it in. So the screws near the bottom of the door are the short ones and the long ones go up at the top where the plastic controller uh, control panel goes. I'm putting on this little door piece, slid down the front panel, push it in into position There we go. And then I'll open the door and I'll line up the little holes and I'll add those, those littler screws that are holding the metal panel to the metal door. Sped it up here a little bit. I wish I could move that fast, but just thought it saved time. Putting this little modular connector back onto the control panel, that feeds the information into the computer as to which cycle you want and when you want to start it. And then this thing goes in pretty easily. We just put it back on and then we add those longer screws to hold it in. Speed this up a little bit. You can certainly do this with just a hand uh, Phillips screwdriver. The power ones are nice, it just makes it go faster. So we got all the parts back in, everything's tight. I'm going to close the door. 
and just want to show you guys the model number here I think the light might have washed it out a little bit but this is the model that we're working on some these are either sold as Whirlpool or KitchenAid and these are the ones that are having the trouble with the uh, controller not lasting as long so we got it all done. We're going to test it by again setting it for the hottest settings we can. And then we turned it on and it did great. We got nice steam, melted the soap, everything's back to normal. So I hope this has been helpful to you and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. Thanks for watching.